What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to make our own holographic textures. Alright, so as you can see on the screen right now, this is what we're going to be making today. Essentially, what I want to show you is that there is a possibility to make your own holographic textures in Photoshop without the need to scanning them in or finding them somewhere online. Of course, this uh, is the easiest way. And I got to admit, I, I used a uh, an actual holographic image as a reference for this. It's this image. So it's a little bit different as you can see. It's a little bit more blurry as well. But what I wanted to do in this video is basically show you some techniques in order to how create something similar to this and what techniques you can use to randomize this a little bit more in order to create an actual like iridescent looking texture because these iridescent and holographic textures usually uh, have a certain set of randomness in like the shape and color as you can see right here so that's what we really want to go for and that's what i want to show you today so we're going to basically break down this whole image from the base which is this so the first thing we're going to do is try and make something similar to this so we're going to be making a new layer and we're going to make sure that our black and white uh, foreground and background color are selected by pressing d on our keyboard now we're going to go to filter render clouds and as you might know the clouds filter randomly generates some black and white uh, values whatever canvas size you have so what you want to do next is distort this a little bit by going to filter liquify this brings out the liquify tool and what you want to do is grab the forward warp tool make a larger brush and essentially you want to just be you know drawing out some distortions like i'm doing right here and if you're feeling creative, you can also do the twirl tool, which essentially will twirl, twirls a little bit. Um, I'm quite happy with this, I guess, so let's just click OK. It doesn't really matter at this point because we're going to scale it up a little bit and see if there are any parts that might be interesting to us. And I do kind of like this. So let's just click OK. And in order to, you know, make sure that we don't have any too much data outside of our canvas here, what we can do is just press Control a this basically makes a selection of our canvas what we have so far let's just mask that by go and click on the mask button here right click and apply layer mask so now we basically uh, got rid of all of these sections outside of the canvas so next we want to blur this a little bit by going to filter blur gaussian blur you can basically use any blurry one just for the sake of this tutorial i'm just going to go use a gaussian blur and we're going to use a radius of well somewhere between 30 to 50 pixels i guess and my document size is 3000 by 3000 pixels by the way so let's just do 35. I think 35 is quite okay. Let's look at the other one. Yeah, it's kind of similar, I guess. So the next thing you want to do is increase a little bit of contrast. And I did this by just a simple curves adjustment. You know, you can see what I did here. I just basically make the darker parts a little bit darker and the lighter parts a little bit lighter. Nothing too special going on there. So the next thing you want to do is make a gradient map. And we're going to do a gradient map. You can kind of see already what's happening here. Um, I'm just going to show you uh, from the get-go. Let's just make a new gradient map and right click and we'll delete the layer mask and let's click on the gradient and the thing you want to do right now is grab a couple of pastel colors and see uh you know what's going to happen to our canvas so let's just move this away for so we can see more of our canvas let's go and grab a very subtle like pink color and a very subtle like pastel blue and immediately this already starts to look kind of like a reticent you know image but uh, i also want to do a little bit of green in there uh, maybe a little bit more pink now uh, maybe like in between here even like an almost white pink like this and we'll do another blue one maybe a little bit more towards cyan i want to stay away from like the two saturated colors that's all i'm going to say about this uh, let's do this like really like pink here once again, maybe maybe like an orange, more orangish pink or something like that. Uh, maybe we'll do these together right here. It's also a little bit of trial and error and of course what you're going to see with this because we have a little bit of contrast in our image, you're going to bound to see uh, a little bit more of these like harder edges as you can see. Um, and that's quite all right because we're going to you know see if we can fix that later anyways we no, well this is kind of something that you might want to have it's maybe a little bit too detailed but for now it's fine so what you want to do now is press ctrl alt shift and e on your keyboard or if on a mac that's command option shift e and essentially this makes a flattened layer of whatever we had so far and we had that with our different image as well so this is what we had with the other example this is what we have right now so um what you kind of want to do is maybe blur this a little bit more so 
maybe like 20 pixels or something just to get out these hard edges and i'm going to duplicate this uh once and what i'm going to just do is press ctrl t on my keyboard this brings up the free transform menu of course and i'm just going to play around with the scale and with the skew so by holding ctrl or command on my keyboard and i'm just going to press these and hold like drag these points outward somewhere and this of course creates a little bit of perspective as you can see which creates of course like a little bit more of a perspective distortion something that you really see here you know there's a larger bend going on here compared to right here so that's something that you have to take into account as well when doing these holographic textures because if you're going to leave it at what we had so far it's going to look a little bit more flat i guess what i'm going to do next is essentially i'm going to duplicate this once more and we're going to just distort this in a different way so maybe like rotate it a little bit more um so scale it up or down this is pretty okay i guess so now i'm going to do something which a little bit randomizes the color this also gives some pretty interesting results if you're into this um, but i'm going to change the blend mode to exclusion and as you can see this creates these really darker more like pearlescent colors i guess uh, a little bit like psychedelic it's really nice but essentially this is just uh something you know this is not holographic or, or, or iridescent or whatever it does look cool however so feel free to experiment with this a little bit but what i'm going to do is um you can kind of see these random lines generated through each other and stuff like that and that's what i was going for uh, you can also of course play with different brand blend modes but this is just a method that i've been using uh, anyways uh, what i'm going to do next is again flatten like the layer where everything is visible right now so Control shift alt e or command option shift e if you're on a mac and what's happening if you're just using an invert adjustment layer on top of this is it's going to get back to the original like color that you initially had so you know this is like pretty close to the end result uh, something that you can still do is of course still scale this i might want to scale this a little bit in the horizontal layer something like this and if you want to you can also of course blur this out a little bit more and there you have it you have an iridescent kind of like randomly generated pattern and of, and of course feel free to experiment with this uh, you know all the different steps that i explained there's a lot of room to play and you know see if you can use this and change this and make this to your own style i guess uh, some other tips that you can still do is for example if you are not happy with the end result colors you can also also go and change the hue saturation a little bit this also gives some pretty interesting results for example i quite like this actually anyways just a thought you can also of course change specific colors for example if you don't like the greens in there you can just remove the greens uh, you can also do that with the u adjustment layer let me just show you so instead of using the master under a u saturation adjustment just click on greens and this gives you the option to to change these colors you can also just desaturate them or light them up a little bit more you know you so you have quite a lot of freedom even though this is kind of like randomly generated so yeah guys this was a rather quick video but i hope it was still useful so this is also an updated version of the tutorial that i did back in the day but yeah i learned a little bit more along the way so i thought let's just do an updated version on this and show you also a little bit of methods to to experiment this and make this your own um if you want to get the project file for this if you want to learn something more about it you know or you want to practice with the file that i just made for this video you can get it by becoming a patron of mine besides that you'll also get access to all of the other project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord server. If you go one tier up, you also get access to exclusive tutorials such as how to make a Y2K Ray Flyer or how to make your own death metal logos from scratch. So if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. But if you don't have the budget to become a patron of mine, it's of course completely fine. Leaving a like, a comment and a subscribe on my channel already does a lot for the support. So with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. This is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out and hopefully see you guys in the next video.